Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host Eric Smith and today I want to talk about a trilogy uh, that I just finished reading. Uh, I read the first book uh, when it came out back in 2012 and then read the second book as soon as it came out. Third book is out and I finished it and that is the Ack Ack Macack Trilogy by Gareth L. Powell. Uh, the trilogy is made up of these three books, Ack Ack Macack, <clears throat> excuse me, Hive Monkey, and the new one, Macack Attack. <laughs> All right, so um, when these when the first book came out, I had to get it, just based on the cover. That's it's got a monkey with guns. Come on. Um, so what you have here um, is uh, just something that I've tried to uh, label cyber pulp. I'm trying to get that phrase going, that term. Come on, people. Let's do it. Uh, because to me, this was a, a, a mix of cyberpunk and just pulp, old-fashioned pulp fiction. Um and in the first book, uh, Ack Ack Macack <clears throat> starts with just the tiniest little forward, little bit of history that says, um, basically, in 1959, uh, England and France signed the Declaration of Union, which uh, created this Commonwealth uh, in Europe and sort of changed history as we know it. Um, so that's just a little bit right there, and then boom, we jump to... 2059 and essentially there, there seems to be three different storylines going on at the beginning of the first book uh, you've got now <clears throat> I've got some visual aids here because I have no idea if I'm going to be pronouncing these names correctly uh, so first of all you have Victoria Valoy that's what it is I don't know if I'm pronouncing that last name correctly um, she was a reporter, um, <clears throat> excuse me, who was in a helicopter crash, and uh, these people saved her life, and they implanted um, what they call gelware into her head. Um, basically, she's got a computer in her head now. For just simplicity's sake, that's what I'm going to say. It's not quite accurate, but basically, that's what she's got. Um, and it makes her a little more than human. Uh, so she, the book starts with her um, going to identify the body of her ex-husband, Paul, who has been murdered. Um, and she runs into his assassin, Paul's assassin, and things get crazy and we learn about uh, soul catchers I believe is what they're called which is something that everybody has I think everyone has it uh, it's implanted in you and basically it makes a backup backup copy of who you are of your brain and your personality and everything um, so when you die it can be removed and everything's there and this assassin apparently has been killing people and ripping them out and stealing these soul catchers. Uh, so you've got that going on with Victoria. Then you have this the story of Prince where is it? Prince Maravec. That's how I'm saying it, Maravec. Um, <clears throat> who is in line for the throne of England or the Commonwealth or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but he just wants to uh, live a normal life. You know how those princes are. Um, he's met a young woman named Julie Gerard, uh, who is an animal rights activist. And these two get involved in breaking into a lab and rescuing uh, lab animals. And it turns out the lab is part of a company owned by the prince's mother, the Duchess Elisa... Alyssa Celestine. Again, not sure about pronunciations. 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we've got this story going on with the prince and Julie and breaking into the lab, rescuing the lab animal. And then uh, there's a young woman by the name of Kate. I just say it as Kate. I don't know if you're supposed to say K8 and separate them. I just call her Kate. Um, and we kind of have her story. And then there's the story of Akak Makak, who is part of a video game, an MMORPG, the most successful of all time. Uh, it's a World War II game. And the star of the game is this this monkey, this intelligent monkey, Ak Ak Makak. And he smokes cigars, and he has an eye patch, and he swears and drinks, and he's the best pilot, best fighter pilot. Um, one of the things I think is really cool about this MMORPG is that uh, if you play it, when you die in the game, no, you don't die in real life. Thought that's where I was going, didn't uh, weren't you? Um, if you die in the game. You can never play again. Um, there's no respawning or anything. If you die in the game, you're out of the game forever. I think that's kind of cool. So anyway, there's these all these different stories kind of going on. And they come together when uh, the prince and Julie break into the lab, rescue the lab monkey, who turns out to be the real Ak Ak Makak. Um, someone... Uh, took a monkey, made him into Ak Ak Makak, and plugged him into the computer, and he's been living his life inside the computer, kind of the Matrix. Uh, but now they've unhooked him, and he's in the real world, and uh, the stories all kind of come together, and then there's a whole the world on the brink of nuclear war kind of thing going on, and they have to save the world. <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's it in a rather large nutshell. Um, so, then, uh, well, before I get to the second one, I'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, I think it's incredibly well written and incredibly entertaining. <clears throat> As I said, I've tried to coin the term cyber pulp because it does have that uh, cyberpunk thing. Like I said, the, there's the gelware and the soul catchers and their cyborgs in this um, and people and animals and things hooked up to computers so it's got that cyberpunk feel um, it's got a touch of steampunk feel I personally don't think it's steampunk but there's zeppelins so people tend to see zeppelins and say hey it's steampunk um, I guess maybe in the in the video game world there might be a, it might be a little more steampunky, but once they're in the the real world, it's more cyberpunk to me. Um, and then the pulp comes in because again you have an eye patch wearing, uh, cigar smoking, drinking swearing, gun toting monkey, who is a fantastic character. Um, I kind of see him as a a, a simian Nick Fury. Um, <clears throat> sort of the Howling Commandos World War II version of Nick Fury, since that's sort of how he grew up was or lived his life was World War II. Um, although there's a little backstory to old Ak Ak. Uh, but it's a great story. I love the way it all comes together. The characters are well rounded uh, and fun, and there's a lot going on. Uh, oh, and there's these. Um, sort of online news articles that are interspersed throughout the book and they sometimes they touch immediately on what's going on and sometimes it's just sort of a a little um, look at what else is going on while our characters are having this this adventure uh, and and because it's an online article at the end of it, it will have just have uh, related links, and there'll be four or five or six related links. And what's really cool is these sort of form a thread throughout the three books. And something may be mentioned in one of the articles, something that maybe is just a little link, uh, becomes very important 
later in the overall trilogy. Um, now, that isn't to say that you can't read each book by itself. They are pretty much standalone stories. Uh, I think anything you need to know, like if you went straight to book two, Hive Monkey, uh, I think you could read that without much problem. Anything you really need to know is going to be filled in as you go along, and the same for number three. Um, but there is that thread that ties them all together, other than just the characters. Those little things that sort of build until you get to the third book, and I really think I recommend you read all three. Of course. That's why I'm doing this. Um, <clears throat> so the first one, really great. I loved it. Um, oh, and as a little bonus in the first book, there is the original Ak Ak Matakak uh, short story, which is quite different than the story of the novel. Um, it's uh, it's sort of the seed, I guess. It's 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 a very good story, um, but I think uh, that Mr. Powell uh, took that seed, and it sort of sprouted into something that maybe even he didn't know was going to turn into. Um, if I'd read the short story first. Uh, uh, it's at the end of the book, so I read it after I read the book. If I'd read it first, uh, I would have had no idea what was going to happen in, or go on. Um, basically, I think the character name is uh, is the real connection between the two. Um, but it's a nice little bonus. I like that, that you can read sort of the where, the, where it germinated. Um, so that's the first one. Uh, a great read, really entertaining. Uh, fantastic science fiction and, and a pulp feel, lots of adventure, um, and uh, uh, a world-threatening um, bad guy <laughs> in here. Um, let's see, I think I mentioned the cyborgs and uh, the threat of nuclear war, all sorts of stuff going on. So that's the first one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then... Last, uh, well, I say last year, but it's actually Ak Ak Macaque was 2012. This was 2013, which is not last year because it's now 2015. It, all right, Hive Monkey, the second book, came out in 2013. Um, very cool, almost kind of the the super spy, Simeon Nick Fury. Um, uh, this takes place in. 2060, so it's just a year after the events of the first one. Um, Prince Maravec is now the king um, because, pardon me, because of uh, events in the first book. Um, <clears throat> Victoria Valoy is, uh, <laughs> well, still in charge of this Zeppelin. I didn't mention that before. She kind of takes over this Zeppelin that she was living on. Living on. Um, so she and Ak Ak and uh, Kate are all living on this Zeppelin. And um, uh, like I said, Maravec is, is uh, the king. And there is this, uh, this thing that some people think is a cult, um, but it's called the, the Gestalt. I believe that's the proper pronunciation. I didn't actually write it down, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, and it's this uh, a hive mind, and if you if you join the Gestalt, you literally become connected to every other member, and share their thoughts and can communicate, and it's a <clears throat> it's a hive mind that actually uh, goes beyond just our world and into alternate worlds, alternate timelines, the multiverse, as it were. Um, and um, it's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, there are Neanderthal thugs uh, working for the bad guys in this. <clears throat> See, now I have to, I'm on the second book, so I have to kind of be a little circumspect because I don't want to say anything that's going to give away anything important that happened in the first book when I'm talking about this. So, I'll just say that everybody is now working against 
uh, well, they're trying to keep the entire planet and possibly other planets uh, from just becoming this giant hive mind. Um, there's a little more to it than that, but again, I don't give anything away now. Some people might say I said too much about the first book, um, but that's just a quick overview. Again, fantastic, well-written book. Uh, it's got the little news things spread out throughout, and again, uh, that little thread that's running through, and there are things that were uh, hinted at in the first book that sort of come to fruition a bit in this book, um, and then little things that are hinted at in this that I found out eventually come to fruition in the third one. Uh, the characters have grown, um, which is good. They're, they haven't stayed stagnant uh, from book to book. <clears throat> they grow throughout the events of the book. Uh, they're all very enjoyable characters. Uh, and Victoria is a very strong female lead. Um, Paul, I guess I mentioned in the first book, we're introduced to Victoria when she's uh, going to identify her, her ex-husband, Paul, who's been murdered. Well, she was able to get a copy of, I guess, the information that was in his soul catcher, and she put it inside her gelware. Um, so he's with her. He's a character in the books uh, as well. Um, and he can transfer to the, the Zeppelin and kind of control the ship, and there's a little, this kind of little drone dragonfly thing that can project him uh, so other people can see him. Um, but he also is in her head, so she can talk to him and, and kind of see him, and nobody else can. Uh, but he's a very, very interesting character. He plays a big part in the stories. Um, and as I said, Merovec is now king, so his role is a little different in this book. He's not the young... Uh, Prince sort of rebelling against his legacy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and Kate is uh, a great young rebel teen who's grown up a bit. Um, and her best friend is Ak Ak, who has sort of had to, he's had to adjust since he was pulled out of the World War II game. And, um, you know, in the first book, after that, there's a lot going on, and he doesn't really have time to adjust because of everything that's happening. Well, a year's gone by, so he's had to learn to adjust, and he's having some trouble with it. So, a lot going on in here. Um, again, I don't want to say too much. It's difficult talking about all three books, because then now when I get to the third one, I can barely say anything. Um... But uh, just another, a great second part to the trilogy. And again, you can read it on its own. You shouldn't. You should read all three. But you could read this on its own. Anything you need to know, you're going to be filled in. Um, so the third one, Macaque Attack, <clears throat> just came out uh, at the end of 2014. I literally just finished reading this a few hours ago. Um another fantastic book a great crazy ending to the trilogy uh this time we've jumped ahead a couple of years it's 2062 um and in hive monkey our intrepid crew uh learned about the multiverse and the alternate versions of of the world and of themselves and of everybody, essentially. <clears throat> so they've, in the two years since the events of the last book, um, they've been uh, Victoria and Akak -Ak and Kate uh, have been jumping from world to world, uh, sort of taking on the bad guys, the same bad guys in every world, <laughs> freeing the different the different monkeys or apes I don't want to get technical the different simians um, I was gonna say the different ak ak macaques but they're not all macaques there but there are different um, 
versions of, of apes and things because there's a silverback gorilla and there's an orangutan and there's a chimp. Um, so all sorts of different simian creatures that on these different worlds have been experimented on. So they're, they're uh, saving them. They've found a parallel world where the they've sort of built this simian fortress where they can go and, and live if they choose. Um, Maravec is still king. He's still doing his thing. Um, there's there's rebuilding going on after the events of Hive Monkey. Um, <clears throat> and again, the news articles. And this time, some of the stuff from the little the news articles, just the little hints of things uh, in the first two, play a big part in what happens here. Um, and it involves Mars. That's all I'm going to say about that. Excuse me. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of, of dimension hopping in this, parallel world hopping, as they go from world to world, um, freeing monkeys, uh, taking revenge on, uh, on the bad guys. And uh, there's another invasion or two going on and actually if you look you can see the, the kind of the simian army there with ak ak there's uh cuddles i think was his name cuddles and they all have interesting names and there's uh you know they're primates so there's um there's a, a monkey that uh, thinks he should be the leader so they have the whole alpha challenge thing going on, and just a lot of stuff happening here. And then in the middle, not even quite the middle, a little past the middle, all of a sudden, there's this little section where it's a completely different story. Um, it just comes out of nowhere, and no idea what's happening. But I trust Mr. Powell by this point. Um, so it's interesting that... Uh, uh, you just have this little chunk that's something totally different. But I knew he was going to bring it in and tie it all together, and he does. Um, <clears throat> introduces brand new characters. Uh, but this one's got a little more steampunk in it uh, because of some of the contraptions and things. Still very pulp with the action and the monkeys. I mean, come on. An army of monkeys... That's very pulp. Talking monkeys. Um, so, cyber pulp. Come on, everybody. we got to get that term. I'm going to start a hashtag, hashtag cyber pulp. But uh, a fantastic conclusion. Um, it gets crazy. Just absolutely nuts by the end of this book. Uh, again, i pretty sure... Sh- eh, you could read this on its own. Um... Not as easily as you could read the second book without reading the first book. There's a little more information that that needs to be given to you, and it's in here. Um, And hopefully if you did just pick this up, it'll make you want to go and and get the others and fill in the details. Um, You can read this on your own. Again, why would you? It's a fantastic trilogy. Uh, Again, the characters grow. Um, the events of the last two books have an effect on everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Victoria, um, sort of her her position in life has changed again. Another big change. Uh, Paul, the um, the dead husband that's in her head and in the computers of the ship and everything is starting to degrade. He's lasted much longer than any other copy of a person has, um, but he's starting to degrade, so there's stuff going on there. And Prince Maravec, or King Maravec now, has his own things going on. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And Kate, um, I can't say specifically... But some big stuff happens to her in Hive Monkey, so she's dealing with it in Macaque Attack. Um, So, a lot of stuff going on. 
but uh, Gareth Powell handles it well. Um, the science <coughs> is, you know, a lot of people like hard science fiction, and I enjoy some of it. Uh, things like Greg Bear. Uh, it's hard science fiction. And then you've got your space opera, which I enjoy. Um, where the, the science is, is very fictional, um, whereas in hard science fiction, that means called hard science fiction, um, where the science is as close to real world science as you can get. Uh, I'd say these fall somewhat in the middle. Um, uh, a lot of it's out there, but um, <clears throat> a lot of it, I think, from what I know, is is based on at least theories, some ideas that have been put out there. Um, the whole multiple uh, worlds thing is something that's... Um, I actually just very recently heard something about that from the scientific community. I can't remember what the heck it was, but I, I heard something. You know, in string theory... Um, Although they do point out uh, in one of the, the online news articles in this book, um, one of them does say, uh, because of this thing, I don't want to say what it is, but because of this thing, we may have to rethink everything we know about physics and science. Um, so the things that are out there are addressed as being out there. And uh, so I think that covers everything. Um, fantastic characters, Ack, Ack, Macaque. Uh, is just great. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Nick Fury. Uh, both versions, the original uh, Marvel 616 version and the Ultimate Universe um, Sam Jackson version. And Ack, 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 Ack Macack sort of encompasses both, I think. Um, as I said, his, uh, his World War II roots kind of go with the original Nick Fury's World War II Holland Commando roots. Um, so I love Nick Fury. I love movies like Planet of the Apes. Throw them together and you have Ack, Ack, Macaque, and it's just absolutely fabulous. Um, a great character. Um, it seems like maybe this is the end. Maybe it's not. I would love to see more. Um, but I hate to be one of those people that just, uh, demands that an author do the same thing over and over and over again. Um. I want to see what Gareth Powell does next. If it's not an Ack, Ack, Macack book, I'm still going to check it out. Um, so, but but if it is an Ack, Ack, Macack book, I'm not going to complain. Because uh, I love the character, and it's certainly... Uh, the ending is open, and it could go on. Uh, just a fantastic trilogy. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's it. Uh, that's one of those books when the third one came out. Uh, these, I just, I was, I read the first one as soon as it came out, like I said. Read the second one as soon as it came out. Uh, third one came out, I had to finish what I was reading, and then I jumped on that. Um, although I actually did set Macaque Attack aside to read something else uh, that I happened to get. The last thing I reviewed, The Lost Level. Um, but that's just because that's what happens when I get new Brian Keane. But anyway, uh, so basically I read this as soon as it came out. Um, and I recommend that everybody else read it too. <laughs> so that's it for those books. Um, as always, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to tell me if I mangled some of these names uh, and you want to tell me how I'm supposed to be pronouncing them, please comment below. Uh, let's talk about books. Um, I will put a link for all three in the description below. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. I believe that's it. I'm Eric Smith. This is the Low Budget Review Show. And until next time, read more books.